thank you very much, uh, David, uh, for the introduction. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, anomalies in Landau's Fermi liquid theory, and uh, I think um, that uh, the um, the origin of uh, this work is actually at the KITP. It's not directly uh, related to any particular. Um, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it, 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 I was in a, in a program, and, but the, uh, the, 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 my thinking about this problem is simulated by the discussion that uh, is going, was going at the time at the KITP. It was a few years ago, and um, only recently, uh, 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 together with the postdoc at um, the INT, Naoki Yamamoto, we, uh, we think we, uh, we understand a bit better than what I couldn't do a few, 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 few years before. So uh, this talk, um, the, the slides uh, that I'm going to present here are written somewhat in a, in, in a hurry. So I would like to apologize uh, if I uh, make uh, some typo mistakes or miss uh, references, especially uh, there are very few references uh, in this talk, and I would appreciate if you, if you tell me uh, what I, I miss. So uh, another, uh, up, um, so let's see. So if I look at triangle anomalies in the Cooper image, <laughs> the two first one is the uh, triangle anomaly, and the other one is uh, the meta anomaly. <laughs> the precise relationship between the two anomalies is beside the scope of this talk. <laughs> I'm going to concentrate on this uh, uh, triangle anomalies. <laughs> so what are the triangle anomalies, or the general chiral anomalies, it's called? Um, they are inherently quantum features of uh, quantum field theories. So the triangle anomalies feature of 4D quantum field theories. Uh, um, one can have a situation where the classical theory has a symmetry, but the symmetry is broken by quantum effect, uh, which uh, can be seen in different ways. One can, come, for example, compute this triangle loop graph and see that the, uh, we cannot make all the currents in the uh, participate in the correlation function conserved. Or one can think uh, about the measure of the path integral. You know, one, one cannot make this measure of the path integral to be invariant under all the classical symmetries. Uh, this has been a very fruitful um, um, direction uh, to think, uh, and it reveals deep connections between physics and topology. Uh, but uh, the original, um, the, origi the, the origin of the quantum anomalies is related to a very mundane problem of the decays of neutral pion by zero to two gamma. Uh, the uh, um, naively, uh, uh, according to chiral symmetry, this uh, uh, decay is very highly suppressed and it should uh, disappear rapidly when the mass of the pi zero uh, becomes small. But in fact, uh, the the rate is, uh, is is not small, and it is because of the of the quantum anomaly. So, in a more um, physical picture, uh, one can understand anomalies uh, in a very simple example of uh, Dirac uh, massless fermions uh, in an external magnetic field. So imagine that you solve the Dirac equations in a magnetic field. Uh, it is very similar to the Schrodinger equations. One finds that the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonians are organized in Landau levels. And the special thing about uh, massless fermion is that the lowest Landau levels um, is not uh, left-right left, degenerate, while all the other uh, Landau levels are left-right degenerate. So uh, if a, a fermion is massless, one can classify uh, the fermions in helicities. Uh, the lowest Landau level uh, of uh, a right-handed fermion is this one, with epsilon equal to Pz, where Pz is the uh, component of the momentum along the direction of the magnetic field. And the, uh, the n equals zero, the uh, n equals zero Landau level of the left-handed fermion is this one. 
um, so um, according to um, uh, so so if we uh, consider the, the vacuum then the chemical potential would be exactly at, at, at zero and one has to feel all the energy level uh, from zero down to minus infinity now imagine that we turn on for a short uh, duration of time an electric field uh, we turn on an electric field that pull these fermions uh, along the direction of Pz. That would lead to uh, the following effect. It's all these uh, uh, electrons, well, sorry. Um, by electron, I always mean fermions. Any, any fermions in this talk can be alternatively called electrons. So uh, these fermions will move, some of the fermions will move, the right-handed fermion will be pulled upward in the spectrum and they will become, uh, they will become particle uh, above the, uh, the zero energy level. And the, these fermions, the right -handed, left handed fermion will be pulled down along the spectrum. This mom the momentum try to, will, will, will increase uh, as function of time. So yes, as a, 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 as a, um, uh, um, uh, um, after we turn off this electric field, we will find uh, some number of right handed fermions and some number of left handed holes. So it's very similar to the, so, so here we, what we see is that uh, at the end, the total number of right, left-handed or right-handed particles is, um, is not conserved. The, the sum of the number of left and right-handed fermions is conserved uh, in this process, but separately, uh, the, the number of right-handed fermion changes here by two units and the number of left-handed fermion changes uh, by two units. So uh, this is the essence of the equation of, um, of, of, of uh, um, anomalies. The currents, the right-handed and the left-handed currents are not conserved when we turn on an electromagnetic field. Sorry for that, it should be a dot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the divergence is the, 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 the scalar product of B times B. Well, it's clear that the rate of change is proportional to B, uh, to E. To the how how hard we pull the electron, uh, but it's also proportional to B because the degeneracy factor of the lowest Landau levels is B divided by two pi. And so all these factors can be obtained. This precise factor 104 pi square can be obtained just by solving Dirac equation in a magnetic field. So you, this is a very a very uh, strange uh, uh, situation. I, I find it analogous to the, the, the Hilbert Hotel in mathematics. So here, somehow, by operating with the infinite number of electrons in the, uh, in the, uh, in the Dirac C, we can see that the number is, uh, we, we can find, we, we, we do something that, that we do min infinity minus infinity and find, we find a finite number. But, but, but it actually, the, the result here is correct. With the precise, with one control, can make it, are precise. <clears throat> so the number 1 over 4 pi square is actually correct, uh, is actually exact, even when one turn on uh, interaction between the electrons. Okay, but recently uh, anomalies has found, has been found to exhibit uh, uh, themselves in a regime that one would normally think as a classical regime basically a regime of, of fluid mechanics. But take uh, this quantum, uh, quantum field theory with electrons that interact with each other and heat it up to some temperature. Uh, one, if one has a finite temperature, then a distant scale much larger, larger than the midfield path, basically we have a fluid that would flow and behave like ordinary fluid that we, we play with in the bathtub. But, uh, but, but we now know that anomalies, uh, if the, the fluid have uh, triangle anomalies, then we can see the effect of anomaly in, 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 in hydrodynamics. And uh, it has been first seen uh, uh, in the context of gauge gravity duality, or more precisely uh, in the context of the uh, uh, the fluid gravity correspondence that uh, that uh, that where you put uh, strongly interacting fluid 
in uh, correspondence with a black hole uh, with some uh, fields uh, in the background of the black hole. So the final result for the hydrodynamics of such a system where the constituent, the original constituent particles have helicity uh, it looks uh, like this. So if I write down the formula, let me explain this formula. This is a formula for the current, some, some currents. Here five means the difference between left, right and left-handed uh, particle number. Uh, you see three, uh, three terms in the currents, and in a normal fluid, there would, be, there, 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 there would be only two terms. One term is basically convection. That is, if you have a fluid that moves, it carries the, 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 the charge with it. There is a, a, a term that one can be associated with diffusion. Uh, but there is another term here uh, that is very special to the case when the fluid have uh, the, the theory under consideration have chiral anomalies, and that is the uh, contribution to the current proportional to the vorticity of the hydrodynamic flow. So in order to, uh, to, to, to just illustrate how, 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 how unusual this effect uh, is, let's imagine for a moment that the same uh, effect would uh, be have uh, in the case of a sugar solution. Okay, so if sugar behaves in the way, uh, in the same way as a uh, chiral and um, massless particle, we would have the following situation. Now, <laughs> take a cup of water, and then let us drop sugar in. And sugar, uh, let us recall, they, 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 they are either left-handed or right-handed. There are two types of sugar. I, I forgot which type we can digest. I think the right or the left. Or maybe it depends on your political inclination. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let's imagine that you drop uh, uh, the two types of sugar into a cup of water and then rotate the cup of water. And you rotate it, and then uh, if sugar molecule we have in the same way as massless quarks in the quark gluon plasma we have then left handed molecules flow upward and right handed flow downward. This doesn't I think it doesn't happen in the case of sugar, but uh, we can see uh, that the effect of quantum anomalies in, um, in, in uh, induce this effect in, in relativistic hydrodynamics. Okay. But after the new terms in hydrodynamics, this uh, new effect of rotation uh, inducing current have been found using gauge gravity duality. Uh, people, including myself, have come back to just looking at trying to find out what had Landau and Lipschitz uh, been missing in the derivation of uh, hydrodynamics, and we think we now found a way to understand the anomalous uh, effect in hydrodynamics uh, in a more general setting. Uh, there are several ways to see that these terms are, um, should, should exist. Uh, the original way that we were uh, using is to try to reconcile hydrodynamics equation with anomalies and second law of thermodynamics. But now uh, there are uh, 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 possibly simpler way of deriving these terms. Uh, but uh, by, 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 by looking at this, this effect outside uh, gauge gravity duality, we now know that the effect does not depend on the coupling at all. It is just in eff uh, the, the result of anomalies. It should exist outside the range of validity of gauge gravity duality. In particular, uh, this, the same effect also should occur at weak coupling. And weak coupling is something that we should be able to understand. Uh, uh, one should be able to understand. So sorry, when you say it doesn't put a coupling, you mean the coefficient of that term is independent? The coefficient of the, that term depends only on the, um, the on the anomaly, chemical potential. Well, well, depending on the choice, the, the so-called hydrodynamic frame, it can depend on the equation of state. But, but, but that's it. So at the, the, the at weak coupling, uh, um, uh, hydrodynamics, the theory that describes a fluid at uh, distances larger than the, uh, uh, the mid-free path, 
can be obtained uh, sequentially from quantum field theory. So starting from quantum field theory, that is the microscopic theory describing the particles, we uh, can first derive the kinetic theory uh, that is similar to the Boltzmann equation that Boltzmann wrote down to describe the, the dynamics of, of a, 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 an almost ideal gas. And by solving the uh, kinetic equations in the long wavelength regime, one can uh, then derive hydrodynamics. So the weak coupling uh, approach to hydrodynamics is different from the uh, strong coupling approach, the much newer approach in which uh, one uh, model the QFT as the black hole and then jump right away from QFT to hydrodynamics, bypassing uh, the kinetic theory. But certainly this way of thinking about hydrodynamics is a, 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 a has a much longer history and is uh, very traditional within uh, uh, within uh, within plasma um, uh, um, and condensed matter physics. So somehow we know that the uh, uh, both the anomalies exist in quantum field theory, and we know that uh, hydrodynamics uh, no, uh, remembers. The, the anomalies of the microscopic theory. So the question is, how does anomaly, uh, how is anomaly encoded in the kinetic theory? And for for um, for, uh, for 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 um, mostly a technical reason, uh, I'm going to consider one of the most important examples of kinetic theory, that is the Landau's Fermi liquid theory. So, Landau's Fermi liquid. So, I noticed that there, there, have, there is hardly any uh, condensed matter um, colloquium without an image of Landau. So, here, <laughs> here's my uh, photo of Landau with uh, his students. <laughs> so, Landau, what Landau was teaching, uh, taught us, Landau taught us to think about interacting, many body interacting system uh, at low energies as the system of quasi-particle. So instead of a system of a, a n-body complicate, complicated uh, interacting system, one can, uh, one can, uh, one can in many cases, well, in, mo in most cases, describe the system in terms of quasi-particle. So in the case of a system of fermions, uh, these would be quasi-particles near the Fermi surface. In the case of uh, Fermi liquids, that would be uh, quasi-particles near the Fermi surface. And the, uh, the only interaction that is important in Landau's Fermi liquid theory is the forward scatterings of quasi-particles. So the quasi-particles can be either quasi-particle above the Fermi surface or quasi-hole uh, below the Fermi surface. And they can only interact by, by, by forward scattering. Uh, we can uh, we we can try to uh, interpret the Landau's Fermi liquid theory uh, as um, a result of uh, integrating out the degrees of freedom that are far away from the Fermi surface. So after this integration, uh, integrating uh, the procedure, one get an effective action for the quasi-particles, and one can do some power counting uh, to convince. Uh, oneself that the only interaction that is potentially relevant, in this case marginally relevant, is the BCS a channel interaction that would lead to the uh, formation of superconductivity. So, uh, um, so, so, so this, if the interaction is impulsive in the BCS channel, then we would get and in the, uh, we would get um, uh, Landau liquid uh, behavior. So mathematically, the uh, Fermi liquids are described uh, in the, this is the, the, the orthodoxal Landau, uh, original description of the Landau liquid is based on a kinetic equation, in which one write down uh, the equation describing the time evolution of the distribution function of quasi-particles that is called NP of x. The number, the, the occupation number, the average occupation number uh, with particle with momentum P at point x 
and it's uh, it, it evolved uh, according to a certain um, Liouville type equation that is uh, written right here. Uh, the the only parameters of the Landau's Fermi liquid theory we need to know is the energy of a quasi particle with momentum p. And that energy consists of two parts. Uh, there is a free energy part, basically the uh, deviation of the energy from the Fermi en energy level. So there is a Fermi velocity times the de deviation of P and TF. And the interaction energy, the change of energy of a single quasi-particle due to the fact that there are other quasi-particles already in the, in the system. So uh, this function F, T, Q here, uh, are, um, is basically the Landau, Landau parameter. The, 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 the angular, uh, the, 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 when we do the angular uh, uh, Fourier transform, we get the Landau parameter. And this theory uh, is very simple, and this theory has a lot of prediction. Uh, one can compute the heat capacity, the spin susceptibility, uh, the velocity of zero sound, and that's the, 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 the prediction that, that one can uh, check uh, for uh, in the case, for example, of helium three. Now, now if we have anomalies <coughs> in the original theory, uh, then we would have to uh, think about what happened when we turn on non-zero e dot b uh, for some amount of time. So in, in, in the beginning, we have a Fermi sphere of left-handed fermions and a Fermi sphere of right-handed fermions. If we turn on E dot B, the number of left-handed and right-handed fermions becomes, uh, it is, are not uh, conserved. So uh, we, at the end, we will have a situation in this. The fer this Fermi sphere should shrink, and this Fermi sphere should, uh, should, should, should expand. And the question is, how does it happen? How, how, how does the Landau's Fermi the liquid theory knows about, about uh, this effect? How does the theory, uh, the kinetic theory, knows which particle is left-handed and what, which particle is right-handed? How, how, do, how does uh, one discriminate between uh, particles with different chirarities? So one of the uh, simplest uh, mm, thought one may have is that this discrimination happens through the magnetic moment of the quasi-particle. That means that these quasi-particles that we have interact with electromagnetism, not only through the, um, the, the minimal coupling, but there is also some non-minimal coupling. Basically, the energy of a, uh, of a particle is equal to P, the mode is this, this, this uh, energy um, without, in the absence of magnetic field, maybe plus or minus uh, some, uh, some, 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 um, some, magne some, some, some geromagnetic uh, ratio gamma times the product of P, unit vector P times B. And here we have the unit vector P because uh, for massless particles, we know that the direction of the spin is tied to the direction of momentum. Uh, for massless left-handed particles, uh, the spin, say neutrino spin, would point uh, in the opposite direction compared to the uh, momentum, and for the right-handed particle, the spin of more point to direction parallel to P. So the magnetic moments that interact with the magnetic field would also point it this way. So this is, uh, this would make sure that the Landau's Fermi liquid theory knows which particle is left-handed and what, which particle is right-handed and treat them differently. And hopefully one can see that, uh, that the signs of the anomalies in the current can be opposite signs. <coughs> but in fact, it doesn't work. It doesn't work uh, if one think about one effect that is uh, now known under the name of the chiral magnetic effect, but uh, it, it, uh, it has been known before, and uh, um, uh, um, uh, I worked on that, and Max Smitsky is here also worked on this problem. Uh, so, uh, in order to see the necessity of the so-called chiral magnetic effect, let us imagine the following situation. Let us have, imagine that we have a, 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 a system of fermions. In external magnetic field, uh, put in magnetic field that is a static magnetic field, but in the field of a slowly varying scalar potential. 
A0. You mentioned that A0 of phi uh, is changing, but changing very uh, slowly in space. When the uh, scalar potential changes slowly, uh, we can use the, the local density approximation. So basically, in a very small region of space, we will have a Fermi, uh, Fermi, uh, uh, an ideal, uh, uh, a Fermi system with the chemical potential that is equal to the local value of the scalar potential. Okay. So in other words, uh, uh, we will have a system that is only that 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 it's, uh, whose, whose density also varies very slowly in in in, in space. Uh, the chemical potential, the local chemical potential, traces a zero. So it's similar to what happened in a neutron star or in a compact object. The chemical potential traces the 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 um, the, the, scale, the the gravitational potential. Okay. So when we use this uh, uh, local density approximation, uh, we can understand how can anomaly be present in the equation of uh, divergence of the current uh, while the system, if we wait long enough, should be in a stationary or equilibrium state. So if we have a system in equilibrium state, uh, then we, we, we know that the, uh, the divergence of the current should be zero, but the time, the, the time derivative it should be non-zero, but the time derivative here is zero because the system is static. So the divergence of the current is equal to B times E, but E is uh, for a static case like what we are considering here is gradient of A naught. And this equation uh, can be satisfied if the current itself is equal to the chemical potential times B. Okay? Remember that the chemical potential traces A naught. So if we take the derivative of that, we will find exactly uh, this, um, this uh, expression. So the conclusion here that one can make based on very general uh, consideration of, lo of local density approximation, um, stationary state, is that if we have an anomaly, then the system develops current. In this case, the left-handed and right-handed currents with opposite sign that are non-zero even in the ground state. So, so we have a ground state of the system with chemical potential, and the ground state have non-zero current. And that contradicts uh, basic tenets of Landau's Fermi liquid theory. That uh, something I would like to, to show mathematically in the next slide. So, one of the equations of Landau's Fermi liquid theory is the equation relating the, the charge current with the distribution function. So basically, the charge current, the, the, the particle number current, is equal to integral over dp of n of p times v of p, where v of p is the uh, the, uh, the group velocity associated with uh, momentum p. Okay, so now uh, this, 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 this equation is supposed to be exact in Landau's Fermi liquid theory. And now if one look at this equation and take, do integration by part, we can pull dp to act on the end of p to the, to the derivative of the, of the distribution function. In the ground state, uh, the distribution function has a jump. It is z one inside some Fermi uh, sphere, uh, Fermi volume, and then jump to zero. Uh, so the integral is dominated on a surface. On that surface, uh, the value of epsilon p is equal to mu on the surface. It's in, in, in the ground state, the Fermi surface corresponds to constant energy of the quasi-particle. And so this integral basically is an integral over some closed surface of the unit vector that goes out, that points out from this surface. Okay. So I, uh, sometimes I, I, I like to, uh, to, to, to ask my, my friends, mathematicians' friends to prove that an integral of the unit vector uh, over a closed surface, of unit normal over the closed surface is equal to zero. And usually they have trouble but as physicists, we know how to do that. We just have a balloon and then pump air into it, and uh, the air will act a uh, force that is proportional to the pressure times this factor. And the, from the fact that the, the balloon doesn't move, we know that the integral has to be zero. Okay. So here is zero. Uh, 
so the Landau sperm liquid theory in, includes in its uh, basis um, the fact that in the ground state of any Fermi liquid system, the current is zero. So it seems now that we have a, we have a contradiction between the prediction of chiral anomalies, triangle anomalies, with the foundations of uh, Landau's Fermi liquid theory. So how are we going to solve this problem? Uh, so before doing that, let me reformulate Landau's Fermi liquid theory in a rather mathematically uh, sophisticated way, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, which uh, might seem useless at the, at the first sight. So I'm going to write down the equation, the kinetic equation of Landau's as the evolution equation of a Hamiltonian system in which uh, entropy, uh, the distribution function, is treated as an operator. The time variation of that operator is equal to the commutator of the Hamiltonian with the operator. And for the Hamiltonian, I'm going to use the conserved energy of uh, Fermi liquid, that is the uh, kinetic en the, 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 the energy of the free particle plus the pairwise uh, interaction energy of uh, the Landau series, the energy that comes from uh, forward scattering. In order for this equation and the Hamiltonian to give me the correct kinetic equation, I have to postulate some form of the commutator between entropy and uh, entropy at another point in, moment, in, in phase space. And by, by, by trial and error, one can see that there is there is, if one choose uh, the commutator in this form, then we will find the correct equation uh, of the, the, the Landau Fermi liquid theory. So th th this looks uh, not very intuitive. Why uh, the commutator between the, uh, the the occupation number should have this particular form? Where does it come from? And one can see that it should the, the commutator should be of this form if uh, if one compute the commutator of two operators that we call A and B. And these operators uh, are one particle operator. Basically, they are linear functional of the occupation number, parameterized by some uh, function A and, and B here. And if, one, if I use the form of the commutator that I postulated in the previous uh, transparency, uh, we f I find that the commutator of A and B have a very, uh, a very intuitive form. Basically, it is the, again a, a one-particle operator with a different function here, uh, a function of P and X. But this function is nothing but just the Poisson bracket between A and B. So uh, the commutation relation between N, between the occupation number, is chosen in such a way that there is a correspondence between quantum. Uh, commutator and the classical Poisson bracket, and and that gives you the correct uh, equation of Landau's Fermi liquid theory. So I think now I can I can I can uh, I can I, I can I can explain Landau's Fermi liquid theory to mathematicians. So they, it is just a, some Hamiltonian special type of Hamiltonian system. So now, uh, uh, the Landau's Fermi liquid theory, once we apply to the uh, Dirac particle, will have to be modified. And this fact is known in, um, in, in within the condensed matter um, uh, community as the effect of Berry curvature. Uh, if one look at the equation uh, of the, the, the wave equation for, uh, for the wave function of uh, right-handed uh, fermions with momentum p, for example, we have to, uh, it is a two dimensional spinner and we have to solve this equation. So uh, the, uh, the wave function will be a two dimensional, uh, a, a two dimensional tensor use, use of p. And one can construct a potential that lives in momentum space using this p. And this potential is important for the motion of a classical wave, uh, of a wave bucket constructed from wave function of, uh, for, uh, of, of Dirac uh, equation. So what uh, condensed matter 
physicists know is that if one have a wave packet that is that one constructs from solution to the Dirac equation and follow the motion of such a wave packet in external electromagnetic field, then its motion is slightly different from motion of uh, wave packets of, of uh, say, uh, solution to klein gordian equation. So normally, uh, if we, when we are teaching um, classical electrodynamics, uh, we write down the equation of motion of a particle like x dot equal to its velocity, so the group velocity is d epsilon t over dp, uh, and p dot, the change of momentum, is the uh, e plus the, the, the Lorentz force. But what is found for um, particles with in one half with definite chirality is that there is an extra term, p dot cross omega. And omega is the so-called Berry curvature, that is related to the Berry phase that was defined in the previous slide. And the, the, the form of this Berry curvature that lives in momentum space is exactly the magnetic field of a magnetic moment monopole in momentum space, where the sign of the charge of the monopole at p equals zero uh, depends on whether we consider right-handed or left-handed particles. So the, this extra term make sure that if you have two, uh, two particles with opposite um, spiralities, two classical particles with opposite spirality, massless particle in external electromagnetic field, they would, their, their trajectory would slightly diverge if we follow uh, the, uh, the classical trajectory. And any question? Okay, so one can formalize, again formalize this uh, here. Uh, using a simplistic uh, formulation of classical mechanics. Uh, basically, uh, this is the action that would give rise to the equation of motion on the previous transparency. So, so this, this is uh, the usual px dot term minus the Hamiltonian. So usually that one would be, when we uh, integrate over p, it would give us uh, the, the Lagrangian. And there is a, uh, the usual coupling of the particle with the electromagnetic field, basically integral of A over the word line of the particle. But in the case of the Dirac fermion, well, the, the, the massless fermion, one has to include into the classical action uh, a term proportional to P dot, okay, times this potential in momentum space calligraphic A. So now we have a com almost complete uh, symmetry between coordinates and momentum. So the, 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 the most um, productive uh, way to think about this Lagrangian is to combine the coordinates in momentum into one uh, single variable, psi a, where a runs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and where this uh, red term here combine all the first order derivative in time derivative terms, and in the Hamiltonian one can include the energy and the potential energy. When we write down the equation of motion, we find the equation of motion, uh, uh, again, uh, it is first order if, uh, equation like the, the canonical equation, but now with a, a non-trivial symplectic uh, structure that one has to compute from this omega a. Uh, and one can also give this equation a Hamiltonian interpretation as the equation uh, 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 of evolution with a given Hamiltonian, but with a special type of Poisson, with, with non-trivial Poisson brackets, where the uh, commutator of two psi is the inverse of this, this, uh, this matrix. So if we do the calculation, uh, uh, at the end we find the following in, in the following formula, the commutator of P and P is non equal zero. Commutator of X and X is also non zero. So co coordinates of particle in, 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 in contrast to what we teach in quantum mechanics, the coordinates of this particle do not commute. And then the commutator of P and X do not look like a canonical uh, 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 commutator at all. Okay. So there is this, uh, yeah, if omega was zero, we somewhat we, this, this, this equation should be familiar. The commutator of the canonical momentum is equal to the magnetic field. But here there is also a magnetic field in, in momentum space. 
so one ex one case where um, uh, one can see uh, well, the, 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 the commutation relation is simpler. Simple is the case when the magnetic field is equal to zero. Okay, so when the magnetic field is equal to zero, uh, uh, it simplifies the commutator of moment momentum commute with each other, and the commutation relation between P and X look like uh, usual, uh, one. But uh, the, 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 the commutation, that is by commutation, commutator, I mean the Poisson bracket in classical mechanics is equal to uh, the value of the magnetic field in momentum space. So what happened here is that this will mess up the commutation relation of the orbital momentum. If we compute uh, the commutator of the orbital momentum, uh, the non-zero uh, xx uh, Poisson bracket uh, 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 modified the commutator and we find this uh, the, the, this, uh, L, uh, the the commutator is not SU2 algebra at all. But one can uh, check that if we add to the um, to the orbital momentum a term p divided by two absolute value of p, then we restore the commutation relation. So this is the manifestation of the fact that for relativistic particle like this, the momentum, uh, the, uh, the angular momentum is the sum of the orbital momentum and the spin, and the spin is pointing along the direction or opposite to the direction of the momentum. So, uh, so, so it's, uh, it's, it's consistent. Okay, so now one can try to modify uh, the Fermi liquid theory. Uh, as we see, we, we have uh, 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 we have uh, previously uh, have presented a formulation of Fermi liquid theory as a Hamiltonian system. So what we have to do here is to modify that Hamiltonian system, modify the rule uh, of computing commutation relations of operators. So first of all, the phase space have to be modified. The phase space because the uh, the, the Poisson bracket is non-trivial. Uh, uh, we have to recalculate the phase space, and the phase space factor is the PDX per time one plus p dot omega. And now one can check that um, one can uh, the, uh, so so see that uh, one one now need a rule to compute the commutation relation between the the, the commutator of two. Uh, occupation number in the phase space, in the phase space is psi, that is both p and x, and let, let us postulate the commuta commutator between a and b to be of this form. Okay, so it uh, looks a little bit uh, non-trivial, but uh, in the case of the canonical uh, Poisson brackets, uh, one can see that this reduces to the previous uh, equation that we have. You need just to uh, integrate by part, and you will see that it's exactly uh, the Poisson bracket times the, the occupation number. In the case that we have here at hand, this equation actually is the uh, is a more preferred one. I think it is should be the correct one, although it relies on a bit of guesswork from from our part. Now, if we have the commutation relation together with the Hamiltonian. Uh, we know how the equation of motion looks like. We just need to write down the commutator of the Hamiltonian with the uh, distribution function to have the equation of motion of the distribution function. So from now on, everything can be uh, auto, um, can be done rather automatically, and we can derive the anomalies this way. But there is a, I think there is a better, uh, there is a, a more um, uh, a, 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 a more elegant way to see the emergence of the uh, anomalies by uh, deriving first the, the non-anomalous, uh, the, the, the anomalous commutators between uh, the density of particle at two point, equal time commu uh, co uh, commutators. So usually when we have a non-relativistic physics, psi decker sign between two different points commute with each other, but here, uh, if we use the rules that have been postulated in the previous transparencies, the, if, we, and if we define the, uh, uh, the, the, the density of uh, charge in, in the usual way and compute the correlation, the, the, the commutator, we find that this commutator is non-zero in the present, especially in the presence of a, a, of a magnetic field. So there are actually two terms 
for general choice for, for general choice of the uh, uh, of the uh, Berry curvature, there are two terms: one proportional to the magnetic field, another proportional to something that is called that I call here sigma, that depends on the values of. This is some some sort of integral over the surface of the uh, Berry curvature, and and in the case of the Dirac uh, particle, it would be equal zero for in the ground state. Uh, for the anomalies, only this part is uh, important. But in condensed matter physics, this term actually is the one that leads to the anomalous whole effect. Uh, so the coefficient k here is proportional to the integral of the Berry curvature through the Fermi surface. And that is quantized. It can be either, either sorry, it should be plus 1 or minus 1, not 1 half. Plus 1 or minus 1 either the, when the particle are either right or left handed. Okay, so why is that uh, important? The, the next two transparency, I would uh, show you how the non-zero, non-vanishing commutator of density is related to the anomalies. And first of all, uh, as a byproduct, we can ask what is the uh, current in this modified Landau's Fermi liquid theory? So the current is, uh, uh, can be obtained if we just take the density compute the derivative with respect to time and then try to find uh, a, a vector whose uh, divergence is equal to n dot n. We can, uh, we can do that. This is the, the, the total current in the new modified Landau's Fermi liquid theory. So the important thing uh, here is that the usual formula of Landau's Fermi liquid theory where the current is just equal to the sum of the current from different particles is no longer valid. This is only one term in the uh, in the current, but there are some other terms proportional to the that would uh, that that is uh, that right now I don't have any uh, physical interpretation of this term, but we know that these terms are non-zero in the current. But but we in the absence of electric field, we can check that the current, even in the presence of the very curvature, is conserved. Okay. In the, if the electric field is zero and the magnetic field is non-zero. Now we can ask what happens if we add to the Hamiltonian uh, the coupling of the particle to a scalar potential. So a scalar potential basically gives you electric, uh, you know, electric field. So if the theory has anomaly, we have to be able to see it at this level. And actually, we can see it here. If we derive, if we compute the, 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 the time derivative of the, the uh, 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 number density, the fact that n and n do not commute between points uh, uh, implies that we have additional terms in the right-hand side of this equation. And not all of these can be absorbed into the current. There are parts that inherently cannot be absorbed in a gauge invariant current. And so we can we find that the, we can absorb part of that in the current, and but the remainder is still non-zero, and it's exactly equal to e dot b. Uh, and we see that there is an anomaly here, and also if for some cases not not exact, if the the, the Berry curvature has a more asymmetric form uh, than just the field of the monopole, we can also see a, the a, an anomalous whole current in the system. But the anomalous whole current is not, uh, again, it, it, it is not uh, directly related to the anomalies. The anomaly is just non-conservation of current in the in the um, in the uh, presence of E dot B. Okay. Presumably, at this point, if you deleted the grad cross sigma term by hand, uh, what line up? Well, either one. If you deleted that by hand, you'd find either you didn't get the right anomaly or some something dreadful would happen to the system. If we, I delete this sum or which sum? If you, if you try to keep the k b term, k -B you term. just delete the red cross yes. sigma term by hand, uh -huh. I assume that's completely inconsistent, something will I think it's still consistent. It's still still consistent. consistent. Actually, actually um, this uh, graph sigma times that is just the total derivative of a current. So it can be absorbed in the redefinition of a current. That one. We are doing here. Actually, um, it's yeah, very good yeah, it's uh, it's actually not anomalous. This this part is is um, it is uh, something that in the literature called the anomalous whole current. That is when you when we have uh, elect when we turn on electric field, even uh, when you 
when you turn on electric field, even in the absence of magnetic field, we have the whole current. The current that's flowing uh, direction. Um, but, uh, but 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 we understand. Uh, we understand now is that uh, this anomalous whole current and the anomalies they come from all come from from the some very curvature on the on the Fermi surface. But the the flux the the anomalies is sensitive only to the flux of the very curvature through the Fermi surface, but not to the details. And the anomalous whole current actually depends on the detail of how the very curvature is distributed in the on the Fermi, uh, Fermi sphere. And one can see also that the new modified Landau's Fermi liquid theory is consistent with the chiral magnetic effect, that is the emergence of non-zero current in already in the ground state in finite magnetic field. And we see that if we, if we look at the current, uh, it's, uh, it, uh, the, 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 the usual Landau's current, but sometime I found in the literature they are called Migdal. I'm not completely sure about the history of that current. Uh, it's e is, is equal in, in, in the ground state, or in, in general, in thermal equilibrium, one can show that the usual current contribution is equal to zero. But there is a new non-trivial uh, contribution that um, emerges from from the uh, uh, from the fl again from the flux of the uh, of the fair uh, of the very curvature uh, through the Fermi surface and the, uh, the 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 current is simply equal to mu times b as we as is uh, uh, is dictated by by the anomaly. Okay, so um, let me uh, conclude. Uh, uh, anomalies can be incorporated into Landau's Fermi liquid theory, and the anomalies uh, uh, can be shown to be related, well, can be argued to be related to the uh, non-zero flux of the Berry curvature through the Fermi surface, and uh, and and one one can uh, uh, I, 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 I can ask one well, one should I, I think one should, I, I, one should try to understand whether there is a relevance for uh, the physics of real materials. For example, if we take a dope wide semimetal where we have a, um, a, um, uh, a system where electrons have two Dirac uh, points, uh, but we dope it so that there is a Fermi, uh, Fermi energy, uh, some Fermi surface, whether one can see effects that would be associated with anomalies, for example, non-conservation of the, of the difference between the number of electrons between two different points, or say the chiral magnetic effect, or, uh, or more, if we rotate the system, whether there would be a, we would induce the imbalance between the, uh, the, 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 the left and right-handed fermions in, on, in the bulk or in the surface. Yeah, thank you very much. Did that, did that turn out to be proportional to H bar at the end? Or is that actually really a classical effect? H bar, uh, I have to read there, I have to calculate. And <laughs> <laughs> proportional to me, I, I usually use H bar equal one, uh, but I can, I, can I, I can answer your question. It's proportional to mu square, so it is a dimension full coefficient, but the coefficient in front of mu square might have an image. Well, I'm sure shouldn't it? Yes, so I, I can. Because on the right hand side of the anomaly equation, h bar square. So let's see, uh, j equals c omega p u d. So j is the number of particles in cubic cycle. It is length minus three, length minus three. This one is dimension length divided by time. The ratio of ratios is one. Square. 
this D give me 1 over the lamp. So uh, C is mu squared. So this is L over T squared. Now I have two, uh, two power of Each bar square. What what is the effect of this term for the for, for zero sum? Is is there a effect that does it modify the spectrum of the zero sum? Yeah, I haven't studied that. So so the equation for n, I, I didn't write down the equation. For, for, for the distribution function. So I, I have that written down. The next step would be to yeah. try to see yeah, what is that. Um, I think, well, no, I, I think the following will happen. I think in the, uh, even in the absence of the magnetic field, the, 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 the commutators is modified. So there might be That's already um, effect in, in the absence of magnetic field. The zero so um, electrons have a mass. So so does this relate to electrons where the Carl Ferrari not concerned that is is even classically violated? Does this uh, is it it's um there, there, there might be a regime where one can high density or the, the high density regime where that the, 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 the speed it mm -hmm. uh, can be treated as a more effect. Ah. Yeah. Then you said earlier that all fermions are electrons, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Have you thought of the non-abelian version of this story? Non-abelian version of this story? I have not. I have not thought about the non-abelian version of this story. Does, does this affect the stability criteria? The I mean, with your arguments of uh, stability, so there is one place where clearly there will be so there will be an instability if one so let me see that there's instability in the concept. So if suppose I have I have a theory of a Dirac, a Dirac fermions, massless Dirac fermion interacting with the dynamical E1 gauge field. So but QED, massless QED. It must says QED in the, and then I prepare a state where the, the, the state where I have a Fermi sphere of right-handed fermion and the Fermi sphere of left-handed fermion with a different chemical potential. That state is actually unstable due to a magnetic instability uh, because um, uh, there is a chiral magnetic effect that means that so, so the a, a magnetic, a, any small magnetic field actually induces a current that fit back into that magnetic field, and one can show that actually the different, the different. I think the the end result is not not known, but I think at the end what happened is that the the, the, the chiral charge, the excess chiral charge, decays into some E dot V configuration at the end. That should be one should be able to follow that. You have a similar situation if you have the hypercharge, okay, hypercharge current with the E dot V of the... Oh, the hypercharge, yes. yes. So, yeah. Hmm? yeah, so that is... Uh, and then what happens is that when if there is an instability in this Yes. E dot V is inherently, in, in, uh, inherently unstable coupling, right? Because it will accelerate around this line. The particles accelerate I think there has, there has been even one some attempt to explain the C magnetic field in the in the universe by saying that suppose we have yeah we have some initial state for some reason the the leptons have, or the fermions have have some 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 some, some chemical potential. No? Different chemical potential, mm -hmm. uh, chemical potential coupled to the hypercharge, and then you can drive. Or, or if you have some 
periodic uh, or some tiny events in the external field. You can feed this uh, instrument. So you don't have to, not necessarily prepare it as an initial state, but you can pump up this using some tiny events. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how this related to a moment. Mm -hmm. The anomaly allows you to transfer the charge into the E dot B. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's thank Sam again for